couple of months ago we showed you a feature on the Mount Morgan Steam Railway. And at that time, the little 040 steam logo was in having a boiler inspection and wasn't running. So I had to drive the rail motor and that was a terrible thing, but I enjoyed it. And I promised that I would come back and drive this little loco when she was fully operational. Now, she is now, as you can see, I'm a boarder and, uh, and fulfilling my boyhood ambition of driving a steam loco with some assistance from the guys here. And she's a truly beautiful little loco. She was built in England in 1902. She's a Hounslow. She weighs around about 10 tonnes. She was used until 1947 at the Mount Morgan mine to haul, ta haul tailings and ore. She was retired in 1947 when she was replaced by electric driven locos and she spent around 40 years in the local Rotary Park as a plaything for the kids. In 1995 on a government grant she was restored to full operating condition and she works here hauling the carriages with delighted people in them every weekend. Now it's just another part of the ongoing story of Mount Morgan and I have to say we had a tremendous reaction to our Mount Morgan feature. Uh, on the show. A lot of people have visited Mount Morgan. Now I can report that the little loco is running. It really is an experience, whether you love steam or not, it's really an experience to, uh, to have a ride on it. And I'm sure if you talk nicely and you are interested in steam, you can have a ride on the footplate. Australians generally have a fascination for gemstone prosecuting, and I guess that's logical because we are an ancient land and almost every river and creek contains gemstones of some kind. Now, just to the north of Mount Morgan lies Mount Hay in the Rockhampton hinterland, and it was the centre of a seismic upheaval millions of years ago, which has created, created a mountain which is largely comprised of thunder eggs. Now, thunder eggs are absolutely fascinating things. They look like sort of an egg-shaped rock from the outside. They come in a, a vast uh, range of sizes. But if you, if you pick one up and you've got the feel for it and you know what they look like, when you cut it open, you find that it's full of gemstone, generally agate or that type of thing. And they can be really quite beautiful. The interior can be crystallised. And the theory is that they were little bubbles of gas which came up through the lava in a volcanic eruption, ultimately moisture seeped into uh, the, the cavity formed by that gas bubble and then that moisture solidified into the gemstone over millions of years. Now, Mount Hay has one of the most comprehensive and most interesting gemstone displays I've seen. They have a range of gemstones of excellent quality which are very reasonably priced on display there. They will cut your thunder eggs. You can stay there in their caravan park or camp there for as long as you like. The surroundings and the scenery uh, are absolutely superb. And they also have a pewter foundry in which they cast their own pewter figurines. Now, this covers a wide range. They cast um, particular breeds of beef um, and other animals for the various breed societies. They do a range of belt buckles, including uh, the belt buckle for Beef 97 and, and also uh, for... Uh, army exercises in the in the area up there and their work is truly superb now a, 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 a pewter foundry is not an, an easy thing to find Bert Kay's um, system up there really is very modern it's they're centrifugally cast and they do a great job now if you're in the Rockhampton area if you would like to do a bit of fossicking with an ex excellent chance of finding a thunder egg of reasonable size or if you would simply like to look through a range of superb quality gemstones at reasonable prices call in and see Bert Kay and his family at Mount Hay.
August 1997 saw the second hugely successful air show run at Caboolture in South East Queensland in the last two years by the Caboolture Aero Club. Now, we'll show you quite a lot of the action. It was the Kingsford Smith Memorial Air Show, so you'll be looking at the replica of the Southern Cross. But these pictures are of Lang Kidby's restoration of the Avro Avian. Now, when you consider that the airframe restoration is essentially complete, it requires only covering and the fitting of the engine and the systems, and that these pictures were taken only five months after the feature that we saw in Air Australia 2, it gives you some idea of the amazing progress that's been made by Lang and his small crew over that five month period. The aircraft looks pristine, it looks essentially brand new, which makes it an even better example of a true restoration. Now, Caboolture is very popular with the air show Warbird uh, people, and we had a huge lineup of Warbirds from all over Australia, from uh, particularly from uh, Toowoomba, Guido's uh, Zaccoli stable came down, his boomerang you see there, you just saw Colpay's Mustang 07, uh, Jeff Trappett was there with his pristine Mustang and there were also a number of DC-3s at the show. But the highlight as I said was the uh, replica of the Southern Cross which was engineered by Bill Whitney uh, six or seven years ago which is currently based in Adelaide but its ownership is, uh, is in some dispute at the moment and the aircraft gave a truly nostalgic display of flying, it showed its controllability and it was really wonderful to see. Now I'm going to leave you with some atmospheric music, beautiful pictures of the Southern Cross and also some colour from the air show.